I also had to drive a, a oh, yeah, r- little red... F- no. I didn't drive a bus. Oh, you were never behind the wheel of the... Um... I was behind the wheel of the car, but I had to. it was a manual, and I only drive it automatic, and I had to drive it up the hill, and I burnt the clutch, and you could smell it oh, no. from... Really no, I was away. I was on about the the theatre. Um, oh, I never company. got to drive that bus. No. Oh, okay. I would have loved to. Mm. What do you want to be when you're forty? Am I allowed to say rich? What about you? I want to do something that actually makes a difference. Change the world, you mean? Maybe just my own tiny corner of it. Uh, so we meet Emma and Emma and Dexter on the night of their graduation, which is the night they meet, and it's 15th of July, 1988. And we will visit them every single year for the next 20 years on that exact same date and follow their lives and their ups and downs and their mm-hmm. relationship with each other and their relationships with other people. And uh, some have called it an emotional roller coaster. Emma is a working class girl from Leeds. Dex is an entitled English posho. They appear to have nothing in common. Most people do have a relationship like that where they are sort of inexplicably drawn to someone with whom they seem to have nothing in common, but somehow that person sees them whole and they see that person whole and there's no rational explanation for it, but it's this kind of cosmic pull towards each other. And I think that's what David's book evokes so, so beautifully. And that's why people are so crazy about it. And that's why I was really desperate to adapt it. It's one of the great cosmic mysteries. How it is that someone can go from being a total stranger to being the most important person in your life? Uh, I think the the romantic side of it um, is is very unique, um, very hopeful. It gives gives an idea of um, a kind of untraditional way of falling in love, I think, because they they go through so many different things before they eventually end up together. I can describe it with my hands. I would say they go like that in a way. And um, the series is as much interested in those two as individuals and how they, um, just how their life, like individual lives evolve over time as it is in their relationship. You have all these people telling you how great you are. I'm smart and funny, talented. Oi. I've been telling you for years. So why don't you believe it? I think Emma's trajectory is really about finding some confidence and going after what she wants. And Dex, Dex's trajectory is very complicated and it's more about losing something and perhaps gaining something else, but losing something first. He's still mates with Dexter. He's doing all right for himself. Pizza Express would have been fine. There are so many amazing set pieces in the book, so I couldn't wait to write um, Tilly's Wedding. I couldn't wait to write... I mean, there was nothing that I... There was nothing that I didn't want to write. If I had my way, I would have put everything in it because there's no boring bits in that book. Um, It was just about choosing what would serve the the drama best and it was more about the heartbreak of sacrificing things that I wanted to put in. I loved Arthur's seat. It was just very magical and unbelievable that we were there. It was a gorgeous day. We were at Mm -hmm. the top of Arthur's seat, looking out over Edinburgh, Mm -hmm. being the leads in a Netflix series. And that's pretty nice. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The second day was less fun for me because I got food poisoning uh, right as we hit the top of the huge, huge hill and uh, we had to just keep filming no matter what state I was in. <laughs> it was far to fall after the first day. Yeah, 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 yeah. After we met, I had a bit of a crush on you. So what happened to it? This crush. There's, there's one location which is Rome which doesn't have as much significance because they're not together. Mm-hmm. But... Edinburgh obviously has a huge significance. It's where they meet. Mm -hmm. Um, Greece is where they have their first, they kind of just get away from reality and they just have a lovely, lovely time together with no other people involved. And um, and then Paris. It's where it all, where it finally happens. happens. Yeah. Yeah. 
So actually, uh, England really screwed them up. Yeah, mm. London was not the one for no, that. No. Um, it goes to all sorts of places. It goes to Greece. Um, it goes to Paris. It goes to Rome. And London, London in the 90s. It really evokes London in the 90s. 90s so well, like Soho especially, and that kind of um, that kind of scene where you you know media types going through Soho with edit bags on their shoulders and stuff like that. It's a bit of a lost world now, even though it wasn't that long ago. So I really enjoyed. Um, researching and writing London in the 90s. Back in the late 80s, it was all I thought about. And now? I thought I've only got rid of you. I don't think you can. Well, we, we never lived the 80s. We sort of barely lived the 90s. I can't remember loads from the noughties. No. So it was really, you know, but it, it, it has such, it does... I think all those eras have some stamp or another mm. in today's culture. There was a lot so to learn. It was, it was, yeah, there was a lot yeah, to learn. Yeah, we had to be taught how to use phones and like desktops. Specifically hamburger and, phones. Um, yeah, pay phones and like... You had to do a lot type, of typing. Typing, type, like typewriters yeah, and... Yeah. Um, because we just didn't... We were like, what do we do with this? <laughs> um, and we had to be taught. Mm -hmm. Usually by an older member of crew who would begrudgingly give us instructions. Mm -hmm. Recreating the period, the 80s, 90s, noughties, was something obviously we spent a huge amount of time thinking about. What we didn't want to do was throw in the obvious references, which are what everyone's kind of shallow collective memory, courtesy of Instagram, is going to think of when you think of 88, 89, 90. And we had this amazing art director called Patrick Rolfe, who was just so subtle in his choices. And one of my favorite things about the series is the incredibly um, sort of low key, but precisely accurate way that Patrick um, evoked the moment across the years. So I think that works so well, dovetailed with uh, Matt Biffa's music, and I should say Matt Biffa and David Nichols' music, because David was all over that soundtrack. So yeah, it's a combination of, and also the, and also the, um, the costumes and the hair it just all work together to just subtly evoke the era um, rather than it being a kind of you know nostalgia fest in in a more obvious way let's pick up the phone Emma we're with Dex and M aren't we do you have any favourite on screen couples from other shows t um, films that you'd like to see over the decades oh it's got to be Connor Waldron and, and Mary Ann oh, from yeah. Normal People. I, I, I really want to see how that plays out. Um, mine would probably be Nick and Jess from New Girl because I've never seen a couple with more on-screen chemistry than those two. I've never seen New Girl. You've never seen New Girl? No. It is excellent. I know you it love is, New Girl. It is so we like have the, had this conversation such before. a masterful sitcom in so many ways. And I feel like, especially in this country, it's sort of slept on a bit. But it's mm. so excellent. Um, and... Zoe so Deschanel and Jake Johnson have the most palpable chemistry, and I think one of the best on-screen kisses I've ever seen in my life. Schmidt, enough said. And Winston, the whole gang. You love New Girl. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Imagine one selected day struck out of your life and think how different its course would have been.